Welcome to another exciting episode of The Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, cutting out places where you buy. Hmm. Take it away, Mr. Magazine. Where do I cut out places I buy? Is or people it, that you buy from, or... There, yeah, there definitely are some people that you... Well, you and I have known them over the years. You know, they're like... Okay deals. Okay deals, but they're, they end up being customers at one point then they turned into dealers and then they want more money for their stuff a higher percentage and you're like yeah i'm friends with this guy we have a rapport we've been dealing forever and i feel obligated to buy stuff from sometimes um you know this one guy with the boxing affiliation board mm -hmm. games and stuff mm -hmm. you know he'd come in for 10 20 bucks 30 bucks with some board games and okay deals i didn't really need them and they're paying the ship and if you put them on amazon you don't get enough shipping and he came in today it was funny you said that because um <laughs> You know, he had a couple things. I go, let me. He goes, one, you can't even find. Everyone wants this, but you can't find it. I go, well, who wants it? How do you know this? <laughs> he goes, well, it says they're none available, but there are people wanting them or something. So I looked up on eBay. He thought it was like 30, 40, 50 bucks. They're selling for 10 to 20. And I don't want to insult him. I go, I really have to pass. And he had some book that wasn't worth much. But, you know, in the old days, I might have even made an offer of $10 just to, but I'm like, you know what? Where do you draw the line? The economy's not where it should be right now. Things are a little tight. If I have five or ten customers like this every month, you know, and I get 10, 20 here and there, I'm wasting two, not wasting, I'm wasting two, three hundred dollars in stuff that may take a long time to sell with very little profit in it for me. So I do weed out some of them, or I'm offering a lot less with the one retired mailman. He was always tough to deal with, you know, and it's just like, I really don't want to buy it. I'll buy it for this. And I just leave me ultimatum like, I'm either not buying it or I want to buy it for my price. I could care less if you say yes or no. And, you know, most of the time they still sell it. But, um, you know, those little things add up. So make sure at this point if things are tight or you have a ton of dead stock and inventory in your death piles, you can. it's okay to say no. You know, so. Right, right. And, um, you know, again, there's uh, so many different places that you can buy, so many different opportunities. Uh, there are some places that I go to just to go to them. And I'll give the perfect example is the downtown flea market. It's been a long time since I've pulled anything really good out of there. There really isn't hardly yeah. anything really good out there. Now, I, I have met up with a couple of dealers down there that I deal with regularly, so that does help out as well. But I've got you know, I've got their contact information. I yeah. can deal outside of the flea market. Um, well, no, the flea, flea market's going to want their percentage. <laughs> um, but So I can do things like that, so that's not a problem. Um, but, you know, it's a Sunday morning flea market, and it's like, eh, yeah. I'll go just because it's Sunday morning. I got nothing to do mm -hmm. um, type deal. I got to get yeah. out of the house. I've been working all week, but you don't need to do that. Same thing with um, estate sales. Uh, there are no estate sale companies at this point that I've cut out. I still go. I will go to a good sale, no matter what estate sale company is having it. Sure. So nobody, nobody has burned me and nobody has bothered me to that extent. However, I've cut out the extraneous um, estate sales. The exception would be, of course, if, if there were an estate sale across the street tomorrow. Yeah. Even if it doesn't look like it has anything, I will cross the street to go to it. Sure, sure. Um, of course. But uh, when I first retired, I was going to like estate sales every Thursday, Friday, just doing it regularly. Um, back a few years ago, uh, I would purposely go to an estate sale with Mrs. Papergoy. Just like, oh, we're going to go out to eat. Where's an estate sale? We'll go near an, you know, we'll, we'll eat somewhere yeah, near an estate sale. Sense, sure. You know, why not? And now yeah. it's like, I don't need to do that. I can cut those out. Now, if it, obviously, if the estate sale looks like it's loaded, it's a different yeah. story. But just going, hey, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. Same thing, and there are a couple of church sales that time after time aren't good. A couple of library sales that time after time aren't good. Unless I literally am driving by the place, yeah. I'm not going to go out of my way to go there. So I've cut out various places like that. And there are a couple of uh, people that I've dealt with throughout the years as well that I do a fast walk by their table sometimes. Well, hopefully, you know. there's, hopefully there's no um, estate sales in the hood where they are selling CDs because then you have to eat some shady place right near there. That would be true. Although some of the best food is down there, to tell you the yeah. truth. Right. Some of the best food is down there. Just get a takeout. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's... Um, there are some dealers, again, that I'll, I'll do a fast walk by just because I know the deals aren't going to be very good. Uh, or you just try not to make eye contact because then you're stuck saying hi to them and talking yeah. to them. And then, then you've got to explain to them why you're not buying right now uh, type yeah. deals. Um, 
but it's going to end up happening. You're going to end up evolving in your buying and don't feel obligated to buy from any given person because of past deals. Um, you got to do what's best for you as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, one area that I've cut back on a lot uh, lately, now this may change by the time this airs, but I've cut back on a lot lately is Heritage. And a couple of different reasons why. Uh, I know that one of the subscribers was asking us to describe uh, the costs over at Heritage. Mm. It's whatever your bid is, plus a buyer's premium, a minimum of $29. So if you win something for a dollar, you're $30 in. Plus shipping. Plus shipping. Ooh. Plus shipping. So one of the problems that I have, occasionally there would be some original art that I would win. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I win it for $7. But if you don't win a second item, Seven dollars plus twenty nine, you're at thirty six dollars. Shipping's about twenty four dollars. You're at sixty dollars for that piece of original art. Wow! You got to be asking a hundred, a hundred and twenty yeah. to really make anything whatsoever. By the time you have the fees on the other end, right, right. Now, would be a good deal if you won that piece for seven, and another piece for three, and another piece for six, and another right. piece for you know. Then suddenly you're at thirty five dollars yeah, plus yeah. shipping, you're at forty dollars a piece into them. Yeah, you can charge eighty, eighty five, <clears> and still make money. Um, I enjoy the time that I listened or that I was buying there. I did. I learned a lot. I got some got some good deals over there, no doubt at all about it. Um, but another thing that I noticed is it was a time sink because they have the auctions every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or the comic auctions, and every Wednesday is the original art auctions. And by the time you go through the comic art auction, you're talking it probably takes you 45 minutes. Sure. Um, you know, so between the two auctions, you're spending an hour, hour and 15 minutes to go through week after week after week. Um, and again, I did get buys out of it, but I sat there and I looked at it and I said, you know, here I am, I'm spending $150 this week, $175 next week, $85 the week after. Well, and and an, sometimes, hour, an hour or two hours of your time, whatever it is, yeah. Well, plus you're also... Because because there's two different auctions. you got the comic auction and the art auction. Yeah. I might be spending $85 at a comic auction on Tuesday and then Thursday morning paying another $114 on mm -hmm. another auction. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you're spending $1,000 a month yeah. between comics and, and art, and it doesn't fly off the shelves. Well, and you're talking five, six, seven hours a month that you could be listing thousands of dollars in items too. So you better make sure what you're buying from them is high profit. Right, right, which it tends not to be. I mean, not that you can't get deals over there. Yeah. You certainly can. But I'm imagining that you're not the only person with the same mindset of like, hey, I'm going to dial it back a little bit with Heritage. And it's more people like you, you know, that aren't buying from them. So guess what? Sales are going to be, it's going to be even cheaper to buy, I would imagine, you know. So you're telling me I should get back over there. Well, at least take a look every now and then. You never know. Right, right. And, and again, that's, um, uh, that is a big one that I've cut back on. But it was the time commitment as much as anything else. Um I'm supposed to have all this spare time because I'm retired, and this is an this is not an oh woe is me, but I've got subscriptions free, but subscriptions to ten to ten let we'll say ten um, websites that'll send a daily update. Okay, you know, and I like to read those. Yeah, I have so I am so far behind. It's not even funny. I can't find the thirty seconds to click on that to read through. Because I'm so busy. Cut down from ten to five. Then You're most the five most you'd like to read. Yeah, but I probably could do that too. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not, I don't have thirty seconds to read that. I don't have an hour to look through Heritage week after week after week to spend one hundred and fifty dollars to make four hundred dollars eventually. Mm -hmm. um, that's the problem. Um, so you will at uh, some point be be cutting down where you're buying at. Um, be wise about it. Uh, some sales, some shows are better than others. Some estate sale dealers are better than others. Um, you know, and it might be one of those deals around you. There might be five estate sale dealers and the one's really, really hard to deal with. And bar all other things being equal, obviously, again, if it's two streets over a different story. Yeah. But all other things being equal, only go to that difficult estate sale dealer when they've got incredibly good uh, estate sales. Otherwise, you know, and somebody that's a little uh, a little easier to deal with, maybe you go for the mediocre on up, right? And yeah. so on. So sure. you gotta you gotta find the mix that you want for yourself. But again, don't feel obligated to buy from anybody, and unless you are literally just starting out, don't worry that you're not going to find places to source because guess what, you will. <laughs> True. Do hit the like button if you could, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.